What's that you're saying? You want me to bring you a sub $300 air rifle for you to be competitive on the field target course? You gotta be kidding. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing today, right here on the Air Gun Advisor. Well, air gunners, first and foremost, before we get into this review, I want to just take a moment to thank each and every one of you for continuing to hit that subscribe button. You've got me up to 644 subscriptions as of the making of this video, and that number seems to just keep climbing. So help me out, hit that subscribe button if you get the chance. It helps me bring you products like this one today, uh, and it really lets the companies know that you enjoy what I am doing. So uh, without further ado, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the Umerx Gauntlet, but more specifically, because this rifle has been talked about a lot, but more specifically in the realm of field target shooting. Guys, uh, you know, typically air gun hobby either starts out as a kid with a BB gun, you start by enjoying the collecting process, you start by enjoying pesting or hunting, but once you've done those things, you want to expand the hobby. See how good you really are. Yeah, you can go out in the backyard and shoot uh, you know, a spinner at 30, 40, 50 yards, but can you do it under pressure? And that's where a field target comes into play. And maybe the cost of entering a field target competition or getting the right equipment can be cost prohibitive for some of you. But that's where I like this Umarex Gauntlet. Coming in at a price point under $300 for a PCP that has a nice stock. Yes, it's plastic, but it has the features of some of the more expensive guns with an adjustable cheek piece here, which helps you to raise your cheek piece or cheek or your eye level and be in line with the scope. It has a very nice uh, shrouded barrel to help with, with the noise. Comes with a 10 shot magazine single shot tray, as well as a degassing device, which other companies make you pay for, but this one comes with it. And I'll show you how it works. You stick the, it's like a keyhole. You stick it right in the keyhole, twist. You hear that? Yep, that's the gas being let out. So if you need to do something to modify your rifle, it's easy to degas. It comes with a bottle on the front. So this is a bottle fed gun. And not only does this bottle have hold over 3000 PSI, but it comes with a Ninja regulator. And you can tell that because on the front here, I know you can't see, I'll try to get a close up picture, but it has the Ninja gauge right there. And you know, that's a quality product. Uh, it's a product that's been used in paintball, it's been used in air guns, airsoft for a number of years, and, and they continue to make good product quality stuff. So this gun comes with a lot of high end features, although uh, that you might see in other guns uh, that cost twice twice what this one comes in at. So um, if price point and get is, is, a, is prohibitive to you, I really encourage you to look at the Umarex Gauntlet and allows you to get in to field target to see if you like it, give it a try uh, at a good price point. So um, a couple of other things I wanna talk about. Yes, I mentioned it has a regular regulator on it and that regulator I was able to get, and remember, I, I'm just starting to break this rifle in, I was able to get 70 shots off of that regulator before it fell off from a 3000 PSI fill at just about 17 foot pounds on average. Uh, it, went, it ranged from just a high 16 foot pounds of energy to the low 17 foot pounds of energy throughout that uh, spread. And of course, I'll put that uh, graphic up here so you can kind of see the, the data points that I was working with. Um, and that's, that's a good place because I know the JSBs really like 17 to 18 foot pounds, it seems like. And that was some of the things I was finding. JSB pellets work really well in this rifle. And uh, again, that can be adjusted and changed with time, but I'll, I'll get to that point in a little bit. But again, just a nice package uh, right here to work with. So in order for field target, for this gun to be field target uh, eligible in my mind, it has to perform not only with some of the nice features that it comes with, but also has to perform in accuracy. So uh, I mounted the Axion scope on this as a hunting scope. It's not necessarily for field target, but it does have the nice uh, side, side focus, side wheel focus on the front. Uh, the turrets have caps, so you can take the turret or the caps off uh, to adjust the turrets. And it is a four by 16, um, yeah, four by 16. 
So it's a very good scope for hunting. Uh, and I put it on there to, just to kind of get an eyeball of what this rifle is going to do. So with that in mind, I took it out to Dennis Baker's over at Baker Air Guns in Mount Victory, Ohio, one of my good friends, and put it to test on his 20 yard range doing five shot groups and on uh, indoor range. And the five shot groups that I was getting averaged uh, center to center from 0.181 to two, or excuse me, 0.218 uh, center to center at 20 yards. So uh, good accuracy, plenty accurate enough to hit the target and field target at 20 yards. Uh, so with that information, I then took this out to the outdoor range to see what it could really perform under maybe not ideal circumstances because we're outside, there's wind blowing at the time, it's about six to seven mile per hour wind. Um, and at 50 yards, it was it's kind of my benchmark usually is what I like to use when testing rifles. I was able to get groups that were just at 1.102 center to center. Uh, and that was my best group of the day. I had a couple of groups that were just a little bit larger than that, but at five shots, they all fell within the acceptable range for a 50, 55 yard field target uh, because you're looking at a diameter of the hole at one and a half inches at 50 to 55 yards. And all of those fell within that. Um, so after I did that testing, I really wanted to take, and that was from a bench of course, so under ideal circumstances as far as the sitting goes and so forth, I wanted to go ahead and try it uh, under normal field target circumstances. And that was sitting on, and this is for hunter field target, of course, that was sitting on a stool, three-legged stool with my bipod, uh, nothing else supporting the rifle. And I was, uh, again, able to perform successfully using this rifle. Uh, again, the first target was a three-eighths inch hole at 10 yards, first try, knocked it straight over. And then I took another target out uh, with an inch and a half opening out to 55 yards, which is our, our extreme. And again, I was able to off the sticks, knock it down consistently uh, on the first it. try, actually, uh, for both of those shots. So ready, baby. can this rifle perform? Absolutely. And it has a lot of high-end features that you might not see on some other rifles in this, you know, under $300 price point, which is good. A uh, couple of other things I want to point out to you, too, about the gauntlet is that um, if you're just getting into PCPs, let's say you're a spring guy, you're like, well, a spring gun is great. I don't know if it's going to be accurate enough for me to feel comfortable going out and try field targets. So I want to get into the PCP range. Uh, one thing I want to share with you is, um, is my good friend Stephen Archer has, has a book that's dedicated to the Umarex gauntlet. And whether you're shooting the gauntlet or just shooting PCPs or air guns in general, it has a lot of good information in it for you. Uh, it's not going to have schematics in it for you to tear down the PCP air gun or to adjust the regular or anything, but it just has some really good basic information about shooting, about understanding PCPs and how they work and giving you that footing that you may feel comfortable then to move on and try some other difficult things such as adjusting this air gun. Uh, and that's, that leads me to my next point is the fact that this air gun, you know, it shot great out of the box for what it is, but you also have the ability to make some changes with it. And there's a gentleman uh, who owns a, a, another YouTube channel. His channel is called Hajimoto Productions. And he has worked extensively with the Umarex Gauntlet, uh, has torn it apart. He walks you step by step on how to adjust the regulator on the tank here, how to just how to get the best accuracy uh, for your money out of this rifle. And of course, with that comes uh, the opportunity to tinker a little bit, which, you know, oftentimes I think of some other companies providing guns that are really good tinkering guns, uh, and you don't necessarily think of Umarex as one of those, but this one is. The, he walks you straight through on how to adjust the regular, how to uh, maybe work on the crown of the barrel, the, the trigger, and some other aspects of this rifle, which is, it's fun to do, let's be honest. So like part of being an air gunner is the ability or your, your need to tinker with the mechanics of everything. And this rifle allows that to happen with relative ease. Now, remember, if you do that, you're doing it at your own risk, of course. And Umarex is not gonna cover any warranty stuff if you do that. But the option's there. Somebody's already done it and they can help you walk, walk you through that, which is a really cool aspect of this rifle. So, um, Beyond that, guys, uh, I just want to talk about the handling a little bit and the trigger. So I mentioned the cheek piece earlier, but 
it really does balance pretty well. Uh, it has that nice scoop right here. You can see it's balancing one hand. Uh, wants to roll on me a little bit, but uh, pretty good, pretty well balanced. And then the trigger itself, it's, it's similar. Uh, it may be exactly the same. I've never tore apart a QB trigger before, but it's going to be very similar to that feel. Uh, it has a little adjustability in it, but not a whole lot. And it's really a one-stage trigger. You, know, you can feel um, what they might call creep or a little resistance here, and then it will click off once you get there. Uh, it is predictable, meaning that you, you can kind of get the sense of where it's going to break each and every time, uh, which is nice because predictability, again, helps with your shot accuracy. Uh, but it's not, it's not something that's going to let, you know, set the world on fire as far as triggers go. But it's, it's a nice standard basic trigger. Um, other than that, you got your sling studs here. And just a little tip, if you are going to be using this for field target, uh, you know, typically I would not rest my, uh, my bipod on the bottle up here. You don't want to necessarily mess with the plastic flex or anything along those lines. I try to put it right about here and it gives you that same point each and every time. So again, having a consistent point for you to rest that on. Um, and then, uh, but over, overall, just a great uh, little rifle here, something that I wouldn't hesitate to use, especially if I was beginning in field target and needed something to get out there and just to test it to see if I was something that I would like and I didn't have one I could borrow. Great option here uh, overall. So, hey, your excuses for not trying field target are limited at this point. You really need to get out there and try it. Again, thanks for subscribing. I hope to see those numbers to continue to go up and your support has been great. And I love your comments, guys. Comment on this rifle. If you have questions that you think I can answer, throw them down below. I want to help you guys out to become the best air gunners possible and enjoy air gunning to its biggest extent or to the greatest extent possible. So with that in mind, guys, may your trigger pull stay smooth and your pellets fly straight. And you know what? We're going to see you right here on the Air Gun Advisor.